Now we are going to uh, welcome on stage two, uh, two very famous stars, two very famous French entrepreneurs. So, uh, and the next round table, I'm looking uh, backstage if uh, everyone is ready. So, Nicolas, um, Nicolas Cellier. Nicolas Cellier will, uh, will welcome on stage uh, Pierre Kosciusko Morizet, founder, uh, co founder with uh, myself and uh, two other guys of PriceMister.com. Pierre Kosciusko Morizet with a, a nice t shirt. And Cyril Zimmerman, famous uh, founder of and CEO of uh, iMedia. Do you say iMedia or iMedia? Hi Media. So thank you for coming and joining. I'm looking forward to hearing you uh, sharing your experience. Thank you, Olivier. Thank you, Olivier. I think if we are all here today, it's a uh, and if the French startup ecosystem is getting so much traction, it's mainly because uh, Pierre, Cyril, and uh, a few other French entrepreneurs have built great startup and have uh, communicated their passion for entrepreneurship to uh, the young uh, generations. So uh, they are probably the main reason why now we see many more young talents making the choice to be startup entrepreneurs rather than uh, civil servants or uh, consultants or bankers. So thanks a lot for that. Um, The two, of, uh, the two of you were the first, uh, among the first web entrepreneurs. You built great companies, market leaders, um, and, but you had very different routes. You, Cyril, you, you went public with iMedia. You took uh, public iMedia very early uh, down the road in uh, 2000 or 2001. 14 years later, you are still heading uh, iMedia. And you, Pierre, you chose to, to sell price to uh, a world leader, uh, Rakuten, a Japanese champion. And you recently, recently you announced that you were, you, you were going to live another life without Price Minister or taking uh, some distance. Um, starting with Cyril, looking in the mirror, Cyril, looking backwards, what are the, the most important decisions you, you had to take through, through your high media lifetime? First, I hope all French audience has a translator because listening to people speaking English with a French accent may be difficult. Um, well, you mentioned the IPO. I think that the first decision that was really important was to go public. As a matter of fact, um, to be really frank, I don't think I really took that decision. I was 27. Um, I had um, sitting at the table of the board and a shoulder uh, many experienced people um, that just told me in the month of January 2000, well, Cyril, there's going to be a crash in the stock valuation, so you should go public, you have four months. And I think that's the way I took the decision. So that was a big one, and that was mine, absolutely, of course. Um, now, the real decision that I took uh, was probably two years ago when the market crash had uh, really happened, and basically the market valuation of high media was divided by uh, 50 times, I think. So um, the company was a nightmare. Um, we had to lay off 120 people. We were 50 people left. Uh, we had no cash at bank. We had debts. And I remember going to uh, the uh, financial analyst meeting and saying, well, guys, I think that's the last time that we see each other, at least for that enterprise, that company. And I really asked myself whether I wanted to keep on fighting and have hope or just let it go and move to some other project. And, uh, As a matter of fact, I don't have any regret today, as you can imagine, because I fought and uh, I've been patient. And the good thing is that, um, well, this economy, this internet economy learns you that uh, cycles do exist, but they happen, uh, upturns and downturns happen more quickly on the internet economy than elsewhere. So I was, I think, well inspired to say, well, even if things are getting down at a certain time, they may go up again. And I think in a lifetime of an entrepreneur and in a company, You have to stay with that in your mind is that it's never ended, it's never done, it's never up. There's going to be some new cycles coming to you, so for the best or for the worst. And the third one, and then uh, I'll, I'll finish with that, was to go international because uh, we are European, so we think we have a European market, but in fact we don't have a European market. We have a collection of different national markets. And going European and going abroad is really, uh, really a tough one, really. 
I, I'm glad I did it and it was a success, but I think that was the most difficult part of the journey since 18 years, more difficult than the IPO, more difficult than the bubble crash, it was going international. And you, you managed? Yeah, two seems, years so, seems okay. <laughs> and you, Pierre, nobody thought you would ever sell Price Minister. Uh, people were, some people were surprised. Nobody thought you would leave one day Price. Uh, why did you sell? Why did you pick up a, a Japanese group, Rakuten? Uh, and why, uh, what made you leave Price a couple so, of months ago? So I, I'll try to be uh, synthetic, but basically the reason we sold it actually, well, first of all, we, we wanted to go public in uh, 2008, and we we're almost public in April 2008. Um, but that's when the um, financial crisis became, became, um, started, so we, um, we decided, well, we, basically we could not go public. Actually, I think for us it was a, a good decision, although we didn't make the decision, we, were, we were really uh, didn't have the choice. Because e-commerce is um, becoming a very global play, um, and you need a lot of money for that. And we would have raised between 50 or, and 100 million euros on a 300 to 400 million euros valuation, which for e-commerce is very small. Um, and uh, um, even though we were, uh, and we are one of the leaders in France, um, having 50 or 100 million euros in cash is not enough to become a global leader. And I think e-commerce is, is really about being global. So, I think it would have been um, a, a hard journey or, or, um, or public journey. Um, and then what happened in uh, 2010, um, actually we are not uh, for sale, um, but we met, um, uh, we met actually Rakuten came to us and we thought they were a good partner because we, we knew we could not become global on our own. Um, and so even though we were not actively looking for a partner, we knew that at some point we would need one. Uh, and um, Rakuten is a very, um, a company that really wants to become global very actively, proactively, but in, 20, in 2010 they were just starting. So the opportunity for us was to help, help them build Europe um, because we were the, um, basically when, when we started talks with them, they had no one in Europe and that was interesting. We, we thought it was more interesting to build Europe uh, with Rakuten um, and later on I became the CEO for Europe, uh, for Rakuten. We thought that was more interesting than joining uh, an American group that had already, uh, you know, f uh, subsidiaries in all the European countries, because basically the, wor the work would already uh, have been done. And then why I left? Um, I think it's very simple. I, I'm, I'm really an entrepreneur, so I, I, I was very happy to uh, uh, lead, to found and Prime Minister and to lead Prime Minister for 14 years. I was very happy to, to, to lead um, Rakuten in, in Europe. But in the end, um, the, the, what I prefer to do is start companies. Um, and um, of course, I invested in about 50 companies, uh, through Isai, uh, the fund that I co-founded, but also on my own in the past years, um, which is like, you d it's not like creating a company, but you kind of feel part of the thrill of the creation. But at some point, I wanted to um, um, feel it myself again. So that's why I left Rakuten, and now I want to start a, a new company. Uh, and can you? Tell us more about not the new company, but what the characteristic of what the... It's good, the it's good because I, I don't know what new company I want to start, so I cannot tell you more, really. Um, if you, anyone has ideas, I'm looking for ideas. Um, but what I really want to is... Um, I don't know, actually, I have many things I'd like to, but in the end, you know, when an idea finds you, you just, you know, when it's a good idea, you just do it. And maybe it's not, it doesn't tick all the, you know, all the boxes. But the boxes uh, I, would, I, would have, I would like to have is a global. Uh, as Cyril say, uh, said, it's very difficult to be global and um, Price Minister was not fully global. So I, I really want my next venture to be fully global. So global, um, I, looking for efficiency. I think um, Price Minister was my second company. I think each time you start a company, you, I hope you become more efficient and you want to um, you know, do exactly what's you know, very important for the company at any given point in time. So that's really what I want to focus on. Uh, and also I, I want to, the company to be not very, you know, special, but I want it to be very big. Uh, the idea is, I, because basically I don't need to start a company. I don't need to work. So if I go to work, it's really, it really has to be very uh, exciting. So I want to focus on building something uh, big and global. Not very original, but... Um, but big. <laughs> But still, still original, there are not that many big companies in France and not many price and not many no, immediate. Hard to do, but I mean, when you start a company, most of the time you want to be, make it big and global. But I think that 
strangely enough, when we started Price Minister, we wanted to make it big, but not really global. And when I see, uh, you know, entrepreneurs at Isai, we see uh, 1,500, uh, you know, uh, um, entrepreneurs per year, actually teams per year. And, and every year we see them becoming more and more global. So the, the new entrepreneurs in France know, they think, you know, directly about the world. And I, I really f feel I want to do that. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and that's something new because Price Minister w was not like that at the beginning. Okay. And you, and you, Cyril, you've been with High Media for uh, 18 years now. Uh, I think you, you don't int intend to live uh, uh, in the next few years. W where do you find uh, your inspiration? What's your motivation? What are your new challenges? What's the excitement of, staying, of spending another uh, X years with uh, High Media? If I was to live, you wouldn't know. <laughs> yeah. I couldn't say anything <laughs> about it, but I don't intend to live. We assume you don't. Well, I think entrepreneurship uh, for me was a big revelation. Probably I was a privileged kid, but very shy. And uh, I think that entrepreneurship brought me uh, a great taste and feeling of freedom. And um, that's what I still have in high media, um, at high media. I've been creating this company 18 years ago with two friends. 14 years ago, we made it public. Uh, we have roughly 5,500 people in the company. I work in Paris. I have my family and my home in Marseille. Um, well, basically that's life, you know, you can be an entrepreneur and enjoy life, you don't have to go to the mine. So I think I don't have any reason to do something different because I enjoy life and because that's the whole story of entrepreneurship. Of course, sometimes it go up, sometimes it go down, sometimes you have a uh, failure, sometimes you have success. You cannot bet on the fact when you create a company that it will be the next big thing and it will be, but you create it with that feeling and that hope. And as long as you have that hope, you're free. And um, the IPO provide me with that extra freedom, which is important for me because I, I couldn't, and I think it's, uh, it's probably not adapted to create a company with the idea who I am gonna be able to sell it to. Of course, you have to get that in your mind when uh, you have to convince investors, and that's probably more the investor mindset than the entrepreneur's mindset to have that in that mind. So you have to get it incubated in your mind, but you have to be ambitious about how you want to change your world first, how you want to participate to a change of world, how you want to be free and have the life that you want to get. And I think that many entrepreneurs are probably not as successful as Pierre or myself and don't have the money that we have on our bank account, but still, they don't look for a new job and they don't look for a job to be a, sal um, a salary guy or salary woman in a big corporation. Because this, they have this freedom uh, feeling which is more important than probably the deep success of their company. So I think that as long as I feel that I'm creating something, I participate to a journey, I have this feeling of freedom, and of course I have shoulders who back me, I don't have any reason to stop. That's life, that's, uh, and that, that's a great excitement. And, and just to add something, maybe because more, the company is more mature and maybe because the company is more stable, we participate now to more, uh, I would say, political or social actions, so we have created a foundation this foundation uh, gives money to a few cultural initiatives and also social initiatives. We've cre been creating with Bibliothèque Sans Frontières an initiative in Montreuil to create a, a code uh, school. Um, so it's nothing to do with the one that Xavier Niel created, which is more for experts and people who are finding a job and trying to get a job and an expertise. It's more to kids living in suburbs say, hey, a code is not magic. When you're looking and playing at a game, this is not a wizard behind it. This is something you can understand and play with. So we participate to this kind of social initiatives and that thing that's cool also as an entrepreneur to be able to have your company involved in those kind of things. Okay, thanks. And if we look at France now, um, you two are quite, you, the two cases are quite isolated. There are not many uh, huge success market leaders in France. Um, why is that so? Why don't we have more uh, successful startups that reach criti critical size? Why don't we have more market leaders? Uh, and uh, and uh, what do we need? What do we lack? Is it cultural? Is there a lack of ambition? A lack of global view? What's your uh, what's your what's your view on that? Well, I think I think it's coming. I, I think it's, I think what we lacked was um, entrepreneurs because we we, we lack the um, culture of the risk the risk culture in France, and I think that basically that's. That's what we're taught at school. I think the, the actually I'm very um, 
I'm very sad about what's happening to the French school system. I think it's, it used to be a, a great academic system, uh, but not good for taking risks. And I think it's becoming still not good for taking risks, but not less and less good uh, uh, for academics. So I'm, I'm quite worried about that. Um, and I'm worried about the fact that basically when you're 18, 20 years old, most, most French people of 18 years old, they don't understand what is a company. So that, I think that's, that's, an, that's an issue. That's, uh, having said that, um, there are more and more people who are more and more open to the world, who get more and more information themselves through the internet, who actually understand that the world is globalizing, understand more and more what are companies, and there are more and more people doing that. It's just a fraction of the, of the, of the people, but this fraction is growing, which, which gives us more and more entrepreneurs. So basically, I think there are you know, kind of two, two parts of the... Uh, you know, young people in France, one part that doesn't really understand what's happening um, in the globalized world, and one part that's understanding more and more, and they are creating great companies. And so I think that France is becoming a startup nation. I think that, frankly, that's just happening. There is no doubt about it. Um, we're having more and more investors, um, more and more business angels, because more and more people have made money selling their internet companies in the past 10 years and are reinvesting most of what they've made. Um, I reinvested all, that, all the money I made, and actually many of my friends have done as well the same. So I think that all that money, you know, going back to the ecosystem, I think what we're lacking, what we're lacking is funds above that can put above more than maybe 10, 15 million euros. But in, in itself, it's not that big an issue because basically when you have a great French company that is looking for 15 million euros, you find them, but from uh, funds that are not French. Um, so we could say, okay, we would prefer the, these fr funds to be French, for sure, but still the companies find the money. Um, I'm a board member at uh, Novapost, actually Alven is as well as Novapost, as you know, and um, so we just raised uh, $17 million uh, and we went to find Axel, um, and actually we, would haven't, we probably would haven't, wouldn't have um, uh, talked to a French fund anyway because we wanted to, to become global. So I think that that's an issue, but more for you know, the, the French VC ecosystem than for the French startup e ecosystem. One last point, I think what we lack in France is big leaders of the internet. Um, of course, we always talk about Criteo and it's a wonderful success, but sad sadly there is only one Criteo and sadly it's um, still much smaller than Facebook and, and Google. So what we lack is these huge companies that can buy other internet companies for a few billions um, and I'm not very optimistic about that. I think it will take a lot of time for France and for Europe to build that again. And, and, and probably very last point, what we need uh, in France is actually more Europe. Uh, the problem is that um, Europe, uh, is a European, um, the business in Europe, um, I mean European business-wise, still doesn't exist. Yeah. Basically when you start a company in France, if you want to start in Germany, you have to redo everything. It's like starting in the US. It's not, it's not more complicated to start in the US than in Germany. It should be... It's easier, it's, yeah. It's actually easier, easier, you're right. It should be much more simple. So as long as we, as we don't have a real Europe for business, we'll have small companies trying to be global but not having a, a big local market. Um, and I think that's, that's the main... If, if we were you know, to change something in, in, in France or in Europe, it would be the main thing is building a Europe for businesses and then have a big local market that's comparable to China or, or US. And you, Cyril, what pieces you offer? What do you think we lack and what we should do? No, I agree with what Pierre said. I think that the fact that entrepreneurs reinvest money and try to create an ecosystem is really important. Um, I think there is also one thing which is in the air, which is important, which has that entrepreneurship today is not hot or cool or sexy or whatever. Uh, we are all convinced probably that entrepreneurship is a cool thing. But uh, when we look at company, today we don't see a lot of entrepreneurs. I know, I mean, the head of Medef today is not attractive to me. Uh, the person who headed the Medef before him was not attractive to me that, either. That's why we created France Digital. Probably I hope you find Marie Eclan more attractive. Yeah, but you know, when you look at the scene and the institutional scene, uh, probably having somebody like Geoffroy Jouroud Bézieux running the Medef would have a huge impact mm -hmm. on how people feel company and, uh, and, and a company leader is. Entrepreneurs and company leaders have to be attractive. They have to be hot. They have to be convincing to people and telling them, well, I'm doing something great. Come and join me. 
how many people, leaders of big corporation in France or big association of big corporation do you see as such as people that can really be attractive, appealing, and cool? And we have this problem of, okay, economy is about companies. Companies today, when you look at them, well, okay, I have a job and I hope that I won't be laid off, but that's it because it's not really attractive. Even though I spent eight years of my day in that company, I don't expect more. And you have companies, startups like us, trying to be attractive, but we are very small guys. And today, when you look at what a typical French uh, man or woman think, I think that when he, he thinks about companies, he doesn't think about Pierre, he doesn't think about France Digital, mm -hmm. he thinks about EDF, he thinks about big corporation. And obviously, when you look at them, well... That's inspiring. Yeah, it's uh, good. I mean, it's great success. They are a huge company. They are the world leaders that uh, you were evoking, but uh, they are not having a vision that moves you in that direction and that gets mm. a, uh, an appeal and an attraction. And I think that, uh, basically, if we want people to be more and more entrepreneurs, we have to get globally something to say that, well, come and be entrepreneurs, that's a cool thing. And, and, and you can look at people who are really happy to live that, on, that journey. And don't complain. And don't complain, <laughs> don't yeah, complain. because entrepreneurs complain a lot. <laughs> I, I have a tax <laughs> issue, my, bleed heart, my heart is bleeding. Stop it, that's enough. Yeah. Okay, um, two last questions. I think that we have a few minutes to go there. Uh, you, Pierre, you, you've been both uh, incredibly successful entrepreneur. People don't know it, but you have also been a very successful investor through Isai, through your investor in Blablacar, in Novapost. How, how can we bridge the gap between entrepreneurs and VCs? You being on both sides, uh, what would you be your advice to VCs and to entrepreneurs to work better together? I think that's happening as well. I, actually, I see many um, um, great, fun, great funds. I, I think the the I mean funds like Alven or, or Isai, I think they're they're very, very different from uh, you know most funds that were existing ten years ago. Uh, and and I think so. I think so that the the, the culture of VCs being um, more hands-on um, and because there are more VCs, there is more competition, and the VCs has to basically to demonstrate to the companies that they can really help them. Um, so I think that's, that's changing a lot. Also, I think that the entrepreneurs are, um, understand better and better what's a VC. Um, and I remember, uh, you know, when we started Price Minister, and I remember when we talked to, with a 3i, actually was to Jean-David, now head of uh, Isaïe, um, he came with, you know, all this very standard VC stuff. And that all sounded like really Chinese to me because I, I was very surprised about all these things. And that was actually all very basic standard thing. I think you know, the, the, most of the people who start companies now in France, they, they understand much better what's standard, what's not standard. The, the culture has evolved a lot. Mm -hmm. So I think it's about having more VCs, more than you know, having VCs you know, behaving differently or something like that. And, and I think a big issue in France is how we move all the money from um, um, assurance V uh, and, and all these things basically that are useful to buy the French debt, but don't create much value. Um, to move all that money to startups, I think that, that's, uh, that's the issue. And, and, and um, BPE is doing a great job at, at doing part of that, but I think it's, it's only the beginning. We, again, Isai uh, gets 1,500 1, uh, companies, I mean, projects per year, and we fund three or four. So of course, there are other funds, but basically, definitely means that there is a big lack of, of funds in France. Okay, thanks. And last question, Cyril, we have a question from the audience from Twitter. You, you don't have to answer if you don't want to. What are you going to do with the 90 million uh, euro coming from Je the sale of jeuxvideo.com? My plane give is just to waiting outside. My private jet is just <laughs> waiting outside. No, no, he's go going to give everything to the foundation so you can keep the high media shares. Okay, thank you. I hope there were non-French speakers in the room because uh, we were disciplined and I think we were one of the only workshops to, to do in English as we were told. Uh, thanks a lot. Uh, in conclusion, I think if we can, two things, be global, be ambitious, and, uh, and entrepreneurs don't cry, right? The next thing happen. Thank you, Cyril. Thank you, Pierre. Thank you, Nicolas.
C'est l'heure du, du déjeuner, merci à tous. On se retrouvera ensuite à, à 14h. On a également la visite de Fleur Pellerin qui vient nous, nous dire bonjour. Donc vous pouvez, euh, pendant l'heure du déjeuner, euh, la guetter et lui poser des questions.